Welcome to the Christian Indie Writers Podcast, where we inform, encourage, and support Christian indie writers on the journey toward publication. I'm Jennifer Carl Tong, and I write historical Christian romance. I'm Christina Katane, and I write multiple genres, including Christian dystopian fiction. I'm Jamie Hirschberger. I write short fiction under the pen name J.R. Nichols. I'm Ron Hagerin, and I write fiction and nonfiction, along with my mother, under the pen name Dee Dee Bowman. And poor Rhonda is having tech issues today. So a word <laughs> of prayer for us, for her especially, would be very grateful. Poor thing has to stay muted unless um, unless she's speaking. So <laughs> Do not speak unless spoken to, Rhonda. <laughs> right, poor thing. Well, we really appreciate you joining us today. And we... Um, just appreciate you tuning in for all those of you that are listening to us live. A big thank you to you as well as to all of our listeners on iTunes and on Google podcasts and everywhere else that podcasts are found. Um, YouTubers, if you like what we do, please remember to like and subscribe so that if you click that little bell, you will never miss another uh, episode because you will constantly get a little ding every time we go live. You can also go over to our website and subscribe to our newsletter, which will ensure that you will never miss a single episode that way as well, because you will get one hour before the podcast starts, you get a friendly little letter from us saying, hey, this is what we're going to talk about today. So, all right, this is the beginning of our episode. And every week as we start off, we do something we call the what's up. And it is what time for us to share what's going on in our lives, to look at our chat and see what's going on in their lives as well. And I'm going to start with you today, Rhonda, so that uh, you can unmute and we can hear how your life is going. So what's up, Rhonda? Uh, everything is going great. Um, I'm back in Michigan now and I am looking out onto my garden right now and that I will be out in in about an hour and a half. And I am so excited to get my fingers in the dirt again. It's going to be cold, muddy dirt, but I don't care. I'm so excited to uh, get planting this year. Last year, I had such a bad summer. I just felt so bad. And this year, I've got all that pent-up energy to expend. So that's uh, I'll, I'll do some writing, too. Uh, that's going to be part of it. But really, I just want to <laughs> be in the yard. <laughs> I think it's funny how Rhonda's into dirt of many forms. Sand, yes. Soil, yes. <laughs> And I would like to personally thank Rhonda for bringing some of this beautiful weather back from Florida because here in Michigan, it is gorgeous. Like yeah. I have to lean way dry. forward in my seat so that the window <laughs> doesn't hit me. Or like Tina said, it looks like I have a halo on, but if I sit just right, but look, I can't get it just right. So clearly, <laughs> clearly I do not, I'm not an angel. All right. I'm going to go next so that I get it out of the way. Um, so my what's up is my um, house is in further disarray. We have ripped out almost the entire kitchen. Whoa. Um, my husband was approved to work one handed, you know, he's in a cast now. So oh. between him and the girls and I, uh, we ripped a bunch of stuff out and now we're kind of putting electrical back in and it's mm -hmm. actually starting to like, look like we actually have a finished kitchen before the next century. So yeah, so it's just been very dirty in our house and that's what I've been busy doing as well as book stuff. But I will talk about that and the what's next. Yeah. What an education for your girls to see all that home remod and actually, you know, take part in it. They love tearing down walls. They love that kind of stuff. I bet. Like, they, that was great. <laughs> the cleaning up after you tear down walls. Uh, they did it. But the they, they, they I'm with them. Yeah. Oh, we got a lot in the chat today. Hi, Shell, Gigi, Jason, Piper. Uh, it's rainy where Gigi is, but she says that's okay. She's yeah. got a good attitude anyway. Good All right. Morning, Speaking of good attitudes, how about you, Jamie? What's your, what's up? Well, um... I discovered something interesting that when I do my live sprints with StreamYard, like I don't know if StreamYard did an update when I wasn't looking or if I just immediately went to scheduling and missed all of the features from the first screen. But I was able to add my little face in the corner of my live sprint today. So that's my what's up. If you like to watch me write my writing sprint for the show live, on Facebook before we're here. Um, it's very random because it's whenever we're ready, honestly, sometime between nine and 10 o'clock, you'll see my little face in the, <laughs> in the lower corner of your screen this time. That's my what's up is that I have figured out a tech thing. Yay, me. <laughs> That's awesome. Piper says it's beautiful in Massachusetts today. Oh, nice. So I love Massachusetts in the fall. So pretty, but 
springtime Massachusetts was never my favorite, but here's why. I didn't live where Piper lived. I lived in the city. I lived in Boston. And so it you don't see a whole lot of like green and flowers and stuff until closer to summer because it's mostly planted stuff. So I bet where she lives, it's beautiful. But yeah, mm -hmm. I miss Massachusetts. All right, Tina, how about you? What's your what's up? Um, well, I took the Right Better Faster course. Um, and I, I believe it was Piper that also took that. And they gave me this, like a two or three small, tiny things to change. And I've just been blown away by the impact. That's that awesome. Two or three tiny little things have changed. And I've been, I've been hitting my goal for the last two weeks of 10,000 words a week. That's awesome. So my book is looking like it's going to be done the first week of May, the rough draft. Yay. That's so exciting. That is that's so a really exciting. big, that's big. That's a lot sooner than you thought. Well, I originally made my goal May 1st, but that was in January before I spent a lot of time procrastinating and being stuck. So I didn't get serious about it until like the middle of March. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's super exciting. Hey, Maria, glad that you were able to join us from the UK today. All right. So today's topic, we're going to slide into that just real. I feel like we're just like going like gangbusters today. No, I know we, it's only six minutes in and we've already gotten through all the what's ups. What's up with the yeah. people in chat? Like I'm seeing a lot of hello. Oh, Piper. Here we go. She put her, she put her first book up for free and it hit number two in Christian I, fantasy free. Good for you, Piper. Way to take some action. She's now 30% done with her next book. Well, way to go. Just keep writing them. Right. Awesome. Like, I mean, don't rest on your laurels. Isn't that the advice? Yeah. And next week we're talking about going perma free. So Piper, you're going to be very important in our chat next week. I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jason She'll be able said, to tell her experience too. Yeah. Jason says my what's up been working on developing characters for my story. That's important stuff too. Mm -hmm. Always yep. important. All right. So today's topic for the podcast is um, writing tools for authors. So we have, um, talked about this ourselves, about the different things that we use. And we kind of mention things as we do the podcast, as we do writing sprints and whatnot. But we thought it would be a good time for us to chat with our chatters and with each other about what we personally each use as uh, tools for uh, actually to get the job done. Right, ladies? Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things I want to say, I'm not going first, but one of the things I want to put out there first <laughs> is can coffee be considered a tool? <laughs> and I know the that, that sounds essential tool. Yeah. It really is. Okay. So like, hear me out before we get started. Hear me out. When we first did our very first writing retreat up to Rhonda's cabin or a house, not really cabin, a house up on the lake. Um, we, we had coffee every morning. It was all, all day long. And Tina brought this creamer that was hazelnut. And I got to admit, I don't think I ever had hazelnut before. And it tasted yummy. And I would get my coffee in the morning. We would write. And, I, and so now I associate hazelnut coffee with writing. And if I'm stuck, if I make a hot coffee with hazelnut creamer in it, all of a sudden I feel like my body's just like, okay, we're ready to write now. So I think right coffee here. should be on the list. I really do. Yeah, I got it here. Nice coffee, yeah, so. I mean, Dolly Parton famously calls it a cup of ambition in her song nine to five. And I've never forgotten that. It's like sometimes, well, you make a really good point, Jennifer. I don't, I don't think we really talked about including things like your environment as a tool for writing. Mm. But when we do the productivity sprints, both you and Teresa are really mindful to put on productivity music. Um, mm -hmm. So if you're used to writing in a certain environment or to a certain music or with certain snacks, it's wise to have those things for yourself, isn't it? All right. Agreed. Yes. Okay. Environment. So let's talk about real tools now that I, uh, I, it is a tool. I literally do think that coffee does. It's one of those things, like if I just, it's part of my routine and if I do it, then it helps me get in the mood. Um, but, oh my gosh, look at my glasses reflecting <laughs> on the wall. Sorry. I, this is a lot Swirl. of fun. <laughs> it's just a lot of sun. I, mean, I don't know what I'm going to do to this podcast. Okay, Tina, get us out of this mess. W what are some of the tools that you rely on for writing? Okay, I have to start by saying that my tools that I rely on have evolved over time. Um, so I started out, you know, as a kid on laying on my stomach on my bed with a notepad and a pen or a pencil and writing that way. 
And to this very day, if I get stuck, just like you go get the coffee with a hazelnut, mm -hmm. if I get a notebook and lay on my bed with a pencil or a pen, like suddenly the creativity just kind of bursts out. Now I can't do that because of my arthritis and stuff. I would be a mess mm -hmm. if I tried to lay on my bed more than an, like on my stomach more than an hour, like all my joints would just rebel. Um, but that's still like, I still go back to that original, almost archaic form of the tools. I have, I have to agree with you though. And you guys, we've talked about this before that um, when I am stuck. If I sometimes will pull out a pen and paper and I think it's a brain thing too. I think that, that, that when you actually do pen and paper, it's, it's accessing a different part of your brain. And so sometimes it will like knock something loose. So I am, I'm with Tina on in this, I'm in that camp too, that, that a paper and pen is still part of my writing process, especially my, what's my, my, what ifs, the, the initial planning process for me, mm -hmm. uh, the what ifs, and when I'm trying to like kind of brainstorm paper and pen, I can't do it on a computer. I have to do paper and pen. Yeah, what about you? What about you two ladies? Do, do you guys ever do paper and pen? Is that one of your tools for writing? No, I actually only really started to like writing with the advent of a faster way to communicate the thoughts in my brain to the paper. So I hated writing when it was only pen and paper. In fact, I probably wouldn't write at all if that was the only way because it made me crazy. All right. Um, I think we all know what an advocate I am for um, pen and paper, because really when I first starting, especially when I'm just getting the idea for a book down, um, writing it out, um, it, okay, my brain doesn't really slow down, but somehow my hand is able to keep up with it. Um, and I write things down that I forgot I had thought about. I don't know, really know how to explain it, but yes, writing is a very important thing. I know process. exactly what you're talking about. It like sure. focuses you. I'm pretty sure you have high intellection like I do. And when you're writing by hand, your brain has time to do all that thinking as you're writing. And so things will come out that don't come out when you're typing faster. All right. A lot of people in the chat are agreeing with us. Maria says, yep, I do most of my plotting and drafting early scenes in my notebook. There's something about it that just gets the creative juices flowing. I agree. She says, plus as a bread, I, I enjoy coffee, but also I have to mention all the tea. I, I love tea, mostly <laughs> iced, which I know that probably makes your skin crawl. Oh, but yeah. Piper says, when I'm trying to plan things out, not plot, because I don't do a lot of that. But like, okay, 13 people, which place do they go? What are their names, et cetera, pen and paper? Okay. Jason, I usually write with paper and pen first. I usually can write about 20 to 30 pages every time uh, I do it. Wow, that's impressive. Wow. Yeah. Shell says she loves pen and paper too. She started with poetry instead of fiction and can still only do pen and paper for poems. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. So the different types of writing. Um, I have something actually to say about different genres and how and, so, and different things I use, but I'll get to that later. All right, Tina. So pen and paper is one. What would you say is another? So then, you, you know, doing? like the advent of the, of the like, word processing typewriter that was like a word processor and a typewriter and it was electric. Like I had one of those. I did too. And now, now I've come like, okay, so now I use like a combination of Scrivener and Plotter and Google Docs. Okay. So let's talk um, about Scrivener first. I use Scrivener as well. So let's talk about what that is because some of our uh, listeners don't, have, don't know what it is. Scrivener is a program made for authors in order to organize all of your different parts of your book. So it has um, chapter folders, it has um, pages for scenes, it has note cards, it has an outlining tool, it has all these folders for templates and research and pictures and you name it, there's a place for it in your Scrivener. So just to make some clarity for real super newbies, you would like, okay, like for me, instead of say opening Microsoft Word where I would normally type a document, Scrivener would be like an alternative choice, right? Like we're talking about an alternative to the actual word processor program, like WordPerfect or, or uh, Libra, uh, like, am I wrong? Yes. You can, you can use it as um, like a substitute for Word. When you open up a page and you're writing your scene, you can write it right there. And the new Scrivener 3 that Piper just mentioned is just released. I got that. 
Me too. And I really like their composition mode because you can put a background picture in there to set the mood. So when you go into composition mode, that background picture is there and then your paper is slightly transparent so you can see it. Um, and I really like the composition mode, which composition mode, you click a button and all the other tools go away and all you have is your piece of paper and your font. Your, your type yeah, of I like those little note cards you can make in Scrivener and stick them to a bulletin board. So you can like look at your novel as a bunch of little note cards stuck to a bulletin board. That was always fun for me to use in Scrivener. Yeah. Thing, yeah. I love that about Scrivener. I love that I can, because I started off using Microsoft Word and there's a couple of reasons why I don't use it anymore. First of all, because I lost a lot of writing once because Word crashed and um, Scrivener lets you, as you're setting it up, it lets you choose where you want to back up to automatically. So my Scrivener automatically backs up to my Dropbox. So even if my computer like exploded right now, like right in my face, boom, all my writing is saved on Dropbox, I just go to another laptop and I log in. That right there is, is enough for me. But I love that like when I was writing in Word, if I wanted to change chapters or I wanted to move something, I had to copy and paste and I had to scroll up to that 30 some chapters. I mean, I'm scrolling up and where in Scrivener, everything you can just drag a, a folder like it's like like a note card, like Jamie said, and you can just drag things around, take some this scene out of this chapter and put another one. It's just very, very well made for writers and i love that part about it and one other thing i love is that you can put mm -hmm. color-coded tags yes so say whether this is a draft is this scene done is this scene edited is this scene like their final edit and you can just put these like click these color codes and it'll put a little tag on your folder so you can see where you are it's really awesome it is really awesome. Um, and if I could pull it up fast enough, I might even share a screen on it so you guys can see it because it's that much fun for me here. Let's do this real quick. And I just guys. want to tell Piper, I had my work in progress in Scrivener 1 and I opened it with Scrivener 3 and I had no problems. So uh, me too. Same to here. Tell you that. So, okay, so this is what she's talking about, the color coding. This is a, a novel I already wrote. This is my second novel. And you can look at it like what Jamie was talking about, now it's gonna be slow on me. Oh, it's gonna crash because my computer has been weird lately. So um, you're saying this is a book that people could buy right now, Jennifer? Yes. Where could they find this book, Jennifer? Everywhere books are sold. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Google and Play. And the book is called? Google. Uh, this is called Avoiding Esther. By Jennifer Carl Tong. Yeah, and I'm so <laughs> sad that it's not working. This is my laptop, not a Scrivener issue. My laptop's been very strange lately. So anywho, um, you, oh, this is really making me mad that I can't show you guys this. Um, well, we see all the colors on the side. Right. I wanted to be able to show you the, the postcard or the note card thing that Jamie was talking you about. Can, but anyway, if you just click the little cork board in the middle at the top, it'll go. Oh, to that's what I was doing wrong. Yeah. Oh, well, see two heads. No, are better it's than still one. not working. It's oh, still not working. It's my computer. Oh, bummer. So, um, so the good news is, to uh, other thing I wanted to share is that if you're like, oh, that's just more money I got to spend, it's not super expensive. Plus, we are in April right now, and everybody knows, everyone who's everybody knows that April is Camp Nano. So there's a couple of things you can do. You can, um, if you participate in Nano, you automatically get 20% off of Scrivener. If you participate in Nano, Camp Nano, and you win then you get 50% off. So go on over to Camp Nano. You can still claim, you can still uh, join in on Camp Nano. It's not too late, but you can go under, if you go to nanorimo.org and then you click on writer's resources, you'll be able to find the, the discount for that. All right. Mm -hmm. So was there any other tools that you want to talk about, Tina, before we open it up for other? Yeah, ladies? I just wanted to mention to Jason, I, I had switched to Google Docs for that reason too, because um, Scrivener had lost some of my stuff one mm -hmm. time when it crashed. Um, but then I switched over to putting it into Google Docs like Jennifer does. Um, so I don't use it as much, but I do sometimes use it if I don't want to open my Scrivener for whatever reason. If, if I, you know, have too much stuff going on or whatever, sometimes my computer slows way down. But most of the time I use Scrivener. And I really like the new software called Plotter, P-L-O-T-T-R. Um, I have I use a story uh, genius template in Scrivener, 
and they have scene cards. And part of the story, story genius method is you develop your scene, like five scenes before you start writing them. So there's cards where you could fully develop your scene, but I like plotter because I can put like the highlights in these little boxes. It looks like, uh, what's that called? Rhonda can't Camden. What is it called? A Kanban. It's a little Kanban. Kanban board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it looks like that. And you can have as many timelines as you want. You can have a timeline for each character to show their arc. And I, I just really like, and so I actually open both in the morning. I open my Scrivener and my plotter because then I can see like, okay, this is what's coming next. And do I have my scene card developed? And then once I have all my scene cards developed, if I have an idea that's like down the road, I put it on the plotter timeline. I just put a little box there and then I figure out the scene development later. Um, and then when I'm ready to write, I write right into Scrivener in the car. All right. And, and how much is plotter? Is plotter free or is there a cost for it? There, I, I did pay for it, but I think there might be a free version. All right, can you look that up for us real quick while sure. we? Um, so a couple of things. Maria says that she that she backs her Microsoft Word up to Dropbox. Yes, I do know that that is that happens. My problem is sometimes I'll be working on something and I don't save it as anything yet. So if I haven't saved it, sometimes Microsoft Word will will bring it back up. Like if something happens and my computer shuts down, like for some reason it did last night. I guess a, a reboot. Um, and but if I haven't saved it, then it doesn't save it. But I know that the, I love Word. I use it for lots of different things. But the fact that I can move things around, I can outline in Scrivener is what is one of the things that I just love about it. So, okay. So we Plotter talked a little bit. $25, by the way. $25. So it'd be a $25 investment. All right, Jamie, you are not a fan of Scrivener, right? You, you have it, but you don't use it, right? What do you write with? Um, I have moved to using exclusively the Google suite, I guess you would say, um, primarily because of the chaotic way that I work. There's something about Drive that is so appealing to me. I feel like I am walking into a very organized room full of filing cabinets and everything can go into, like everything has a place for me. Mm -hmm. And because in my real world, I have a problem with like hoarding, I try to eliminate how many objects I own. So likewise, I try to keep my workspace pretty clean. And so I really love being able to put a document away in a folder. It does something to me personally. So it's really a very personal choice. But the drive itself is the master uh, place where I can keep my personal documents in this place and my writing documents in this place. And I know I'm taking a big old chance that the cloud is infiltrated or the cloud goes away, but that's just the risk I'm willing to take because I feel like a lot of this is in God's hands anyway. Right. <laughs> so it's just the way that I know I'm not going to have stress when I approach my writing. And that to me is the most important thing. It needs to feel like easy, like Sunday morning or I'll avoid it. And so I really love just coming into a nice, clean, streamlined situation. And I think it's the, the cool thing about that is, is that um, Google Drive gives me hives. And I think it probably is a personality difference between us or a writing mm -hmm. difference because like when I go, I do not get that feeling at all when I go and drive. And we've talked about this before, how I like, I always have to ask the ladies questions about it because we use it to keep our podcast stuff organized. Um, but the big advantage I think is that because Google Drive and the whole suite is free, right, Jamie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's no risk in trying it out. You know, anyone can, if, if you are looking for a software to start your writing, I agree. I think that if you know, if you learn Google Drive, which is probably my problem, I just haven't taken the time to learn it, that it is a very good organized system and it's free. It does have drawbacks, however, if you are not someone with a reliable internet connection, mm. this is not going to be a good solution for you. And frankly, um, I have noticed that Microsoft Word 
will do some of the things that I love about Google Drive as far as keeping everything kind of organized. But mm -hmm. I am someone who's frequently connected to the internet. I don't have data issues like that or whatever. So just cautioning people who are looking for a free choice, they might want to try um, Libra Office Suite, which is a free Microsoft alternative. And it has everything that a Microsoft suite would have. It has a, a fake PowerPoint and a fake Excel. And you can do everything that you could do with Microsoft Word, but in Libra Office Suite, L-I-B-R-E. So that's my um, helps and tips. Um, the great. other, yeah, the other tool I use is, I don't know how to pronounce it. I was saying Calibre, but I heard some people say Calibre, C-A-L-I-B-R-E. It will transpose your document into another format for you. So if you have an EPUB and you need it changed into a PDF, it will do it for free and safely, but you do have to put it on your computer. It's not like a web one. And I think I might have paid 30 bucks for a license once upon a time, but if I did, it was 10 years ago. It might be free. Um, I usually will only do stuff if it's free, but I might have paid. Um, but it's been worth it. But then I did have to learn a little bit of coding or whatever. Jennifer will talk about Vellum later, which is way easier easier to use than this caliber or calibre. Um, you do have to know how to go in and fiddle a little bit with the formatting code. It's not anything more complicated than WordPress coding, but if you're anxious, you might want to get someone to teach you the first few times. But those are the tools that I would recommend. All right, great. And I just want to kind of a little bit. And when I say that I back up to, because of what Jamie made a really good point about having to have a good internet connection. When I back up to um, Dropbox, it's just a backup. Like if I don't have internet at a, at a certain point, I can still use my apps like Scrivener that I'm using. But then when I hook up to an internet, that's when it backs it up. So go ahead, Tina. I just wanted to answer Jason's question. Um, Jason, it's a yearly purchase, the $25 license fee, and they do have a 30 day free trial. For platter, you you're saying, Tina? For platter, yes. For platter. Ooh, and I'm how do you pronounce try. that again? P L O T T R? Yeah, it's pronounced platter, but it's spelled P L O T T R. Great. All right. So Rhonda has been waiting patiently in the background, <laughs> muted, and I am dying to hear what her opinion is on software and tools for writers. Okay, so I'm not a huge Scrivener fan because um, I did lose something in the beginning and it destroyed me. It was horrible. Uh, but I will give Scrivener 3 a try. Um, I'm all about giving second chances, right? right? So I really love Google Drive for all the same reasons that Jamie said. It just she was reading off of my brain pretty much. But one little tool that I use that is free and handy and just started using it when I was in Florida and I, it has been so helpful is my notes on my phone. My, I've got oh. an iPhone. Oh and yeah. So I use the notes app and I dictate into it. So I'm on the beach and you know, coming up with an idea. Oh, this seashell is um, inspiring me to blah, blah, blah. Well, instead of trying to remember that, I just get out my phone and dictate a little note and go back to it when I, it's time to write again. And that has been probably the simplest, best tool for me in the last year. I love that idea. Mm -hmm. So I've done that before too. This is, that's a great transition, Rhonda, because I've done that before too. And just in my notes and it, sometimes it takes a little bit of interpretation when I come back trying to figure <laughs> out what I actually said. But um, so there's two more pieces of software I want to talk about that we haven't talked about yet. And one of them is drag and dictation. Mm -hmm. So when, um, and I talked earlier about, I want to talk about genre differences. You know, we talked about the, when I write with paper and pen, it's a certain mood. And then I'm typing. When I do drag and dictation, it, my voice almost sounds a little bit different, I feel like. And it's a different mood. And so I use that. I have used it. I haven't used it since we moved into the new house. But I used it for when I'm writing contemporary. Because it just is more conversational. It's more, my contemporary sounds more like me, like the snarkiness and all of that. And there is an, so it, that is an investment. It's about, last time I checked, it's about $70. You do not have to have the most updated one. I'll tell you that right now. But it also takes training. Not only do you need yeah. to be trained, but you have to train your, train your, your app or your oh, software to recognize your voice. How to Train Your, your Dragon. Is there is a book. <laughs> There's a book really? called How to Train Your Dragon. That's yeah. Hilarious. And it's all about <laughs> your dragon dictation. Uh, but I for a time period you get you can get a 30 day free trial of the app for your phone from Dragon Dictation. And I'll tell you, 
I think the app is better. The app um, automatically recognized my voice. I didn't have to train it at all. And I would, I could be out anywhere and I would just kind of dictate it into my phone. And then I would go home and it would download to my computer. And it was like beautiful. So my book um, that isn't out yet, but it's a little short read called The Duke's Proposal, which I'm probably going to name it something different, um, was written entirely using that app. It cost $15 a month, so I didn't continue it. But now that I'm making some traction and making a little bit more money with my career, I might invest in that to to get out some of my contemporaries faster. Yes. And if so you're that, someone who has a carpal tunnel issue or you're yes. someone who has a sight issue or something like that, possibly this could be a tool that would be useful to you, Jen. So I'm really yes. glad that you've had some experience with it and can speak to it. It's and funny when you say dragon, I keep thinking dragging, D-R-A-G-G. -G. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> accent maybe. But, <laughs> but let's be honest, even if you don't have carpal tunnel now, if you're a full-time writer, you have to think about your health. So it may come to a point where I can't sit for hours. I mean, I shouldn't sit for hours anyway. And dictation will only help you to continue your um, your journey. The other um, piece of software, I know we're kind of running. Can I say something about the dragon? Yes. Yes. Um, it try do the free trial first, because if you're high intellection, like I am, it won't, it won't work for me because I don't, it doesn't give me time to think. Good idea. That's a really good, so, and it does come with a, a trial, doesn't it? I know that yeah. the phone does, the phone app does. Yeah, I would try the free trial on the phone first and just make sure it'll work for you. I can't think and talk at the same time, and it just did not work for me. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I, I spent I, the $70. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, maybe, maybe you could sell it or give it as a present. I don't know. Hyper okay. says Jen needs a window shade. What are you trying to hold up there? Your isolation booth? Did you <laughs> no, my to do, my to do list for the day. Um, oh, sorry, right. because because I'm like this. Otherwise, I'm like great in your faces. <laughs> trying to, like I did not. This is the first really sunny day we've had. I did not realize this is going to be a problem at 10 a.m. That's okay. funny. <laughs> so the last piece of software I want to talk about, and this is by far the largest investment that you will make that we are talking about today but it's one that I fully believe in. But you, if you're not at this point in your, in your journey career-wise, you may not want to invest in it, but it's called Vellum. It is a book um, formatting software to format your book um, for print, for ebook. There are lots of other options out there, but this one is the easiest to use. It makes beautiful books and it does it in seconds. Like I don't have to go in and, and fiddle with it at all. It's just really great. And just recently, I saw somebody post in a Facebook group that I'm in saying that they use it exclusively for their writing because, in essence, it is a, a Word document processing. Like, And I was like, why have I never thought about this? It works very similar to Scrivener. I can move things around. Chapters are in folders. So I may try my next novel, my next new novel, doing it exclusively in Vellum. Um, that, and that way, I w automatically I'm there. Like it does spell check for you. It does everything that Word or any of these other processors would do, but I'm automatically in there. So it is expensive. It's about $300 the last time I checked. Um, and I did have to invest in a Mac, but let me tell you, I bought a used Mac. You don't need a high quality Mac. I had a friend that knew a lot about them and we found one on um, on Facebook Marketplace for like a couple hundred dollars and it does the job beautifully because the software is not a heavy duty software. Sometimes software we get for PCs like takes a lot of memory and space and this, this software does not. So it is an investment, but it's one that you can look into. And um, I use it, I haven't used it for writing yet, but I use it for, as soon as I'm done writing, it goes in there and I use it for everything else. I add it in there, everything. So that's my two cents. I wanted Gigi. to mention that, um, I'm sorry, Jamie. Go ahead. Um, I saw, there was a guy from draft to digital on the self publishing show the other day who oh. said that who compared their um, software the, this something that they have available they said it was the vellum for Android so or Windows so I don't know I can't say that that's true I'm just telling you what the guy said he well, was trying to compare it so yeah the chat is actually talking about an up and coming Atticus that is not released yet um so that's something that possibly you would look into if you don't have a Mac and you're not interested in 
um, you know, doing the workarounds that are available for vellum. It seems like everybody is trying to imitate vellum because it's the gold standard. So it's one of those things where you'll see people trying to come up with a vellum. So mm -hmm. that's why Jennifer is talking about it is because, you know, if you're going to invest in the Cadillac of writing tools, uh, that would be it. And you would need a, a certain machine to run it and you would have to make an investment. But then you're doing everything that a big publisher could do and you know that you can, right? We don't know yet about Atticus, but it does look like something maybe to check out. I mean, if it runs on Windows, I wonder what they're going to charge for it. That's a good question. But Piper says that Atticus is being developed by Dave Chesson of Kindlepreneur. Uh, Dave is a good guy. Like he's quality, he puts out quality stuff. Um, I love draft to digital. I love them, but they are not any they're light years away from being the quality that Vellum is. There is still like, there's quirks in it. And like, cause I went with them first and because I struggled with them so much, that's why I ended up purchasing Vellum. But everything else that draft to digital does, I still upload my books to them after I've formatted them. I just, it's just the formatting software that's online. is not the same, but if you're on a shoestring, it's better than most other things out there and it's free. So yeah. I will give them credit for that. Like, so just know that with it, like Jamie said earlier with free comes more of a learning curve and with free comes more like maybe a little bit more hassle, but the people at draft digital are great. If you have a problem, you email them, they respond right away. Big fan of the people at draft digital and I'm big fan of Dave Chesson. So I'm kind of, curious about this Atticus yeah. thing. That's exciting. And I'm curious about this uh, formation of a little click that's happening. The word perfect only people. It's not even word perfect anymore. Listen to me. But they're like, the Maria word. and yeah. Gigi are like, we're the word squad. We are word all the way. And basically, there's nothing wrong with just an old fashioned word processing software. Like yes. do the writing, write it in your email. That's write how I started. Yeah, I started with Word. How many of you, us here just started with Word sure. right here? Mm -hmm. Big yeah. Word, but yeah. <laughs> Cheap and word. that's the book that's that's the book that's coming out next month. So I'm telling you, you guys, you're doing fine. We're just giving you what tools we use because people ask us all the time yeah. about things like that. Mm -hmm. So all right, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. All right. So if everyone has if their hearts are clear and we've all shared what we wanted to share today, I say we move on to the our favorite part of the episode, the feeding of the backs. Oop, oop. Woohoo! This is our feedback time. Now, for those of you that are new to our podcast, we started off as a writing group and we, one of us decided they were going to move away and desert uh, the rest of us. Who would do so such it, a horrible thing? I wonder. <laughs> so in order to keep in touch, we actually started doing the writing group online and it formed into this podcast. Um, and so when we normally do a writing group critique, it is much more uh, in depth because we edit it, whatever we bring in, what we bring to share is edited. Not with our feedback on this podcast, though. 15 minutes before the, or somewhere in the time period before the podcast starts, we set a timer for 15 minutes and we write at the same exact time with a prompt. No editing, no time to look it back over, and then we bring it to you and share <laughs> it. Now, if you would like to be part of this fun, which why wouldn't you want to be, tune in to our social media or our newsletter every week, an hour before the podcast starts and we post that. And we would love for you to also be sprinting with us. And if you're going to do that, you might as well share it with us on, on social media so we can see what great writing you did as well. Yes. And then that's also uh, for your readers to enjoy. If you are a writer, the people who follow you will be happy to see that you've written something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like people are going to appreciate it. So spread it around. You're struggling to find something to put in your blog or something to put in your newsletter as a new writer. Once a week, you have 15 minutes. Here's a quick write I did this week and share it. People love to see that. I'm telling you, statistics show that people that subscribe to your newsletter or that are following you on social media want to hear from you. All right. I am going to start <clears throat> again because I haven't heard her voice enough today. I'm going to start with Rhonda because I love to hear her voice. Rhonda, what did you write today? Uh, <clears throat> okay. Oh, I want to say <laughs> one more thing about Google Docs is if you're collaborating with another writer, it is the best. Absolutely the best. Yeah. Okay. So. Which is why we use it when we collaborate for the podcast. Yes. Yeah. Or, for, or with an editor. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, okay. So today Tina picked out her five worst words for us to write. <laughs> and they were. Oh, she just totally threw me under the bus. I, <laughs> yeah. I'm driving that bus also. Um, <laughs> so the words are proposal, avenue, agriculture, goalkeeper, and premature. Oh, I missed one. 
I missed two. I thought I might have got them all this time. Rats. I think I missed one, but I wrote it specifically to make sure I got all these words in. But I Look, think I, I know premature. we're kind of going a little wrong and this is a random place to put this, but like I totally edit as I'm going along. Like Jennifer spent a whole lot of time dwelling on the these are unedited. These are like I am not just barfing out words anymore. Am I doing it wrong? Like I'm calling myself out because like I just publicly lie violated all of those rules. <laughs> I didn't edit, but I went slow. Like I crafted. So like maybe that's not maybe. And that's one of the I've never I don't know that I've done it to this extent. You guys are going to see when I read mine, like because there's very few words. Okay. But, um, but I think that you got to make the sprint what it is to you. And still, if I was just writing by myself, I would have probably gone even slower and I would have gone back and edit maybe. Mm. Right. But when it's a sprint, there's that time thing. So okay. you got to make it what it is. But really and truly, we probably are not supposed to edit it at all. Like maybe I sh shouldn't have even tried to craft. But then I don't know what I would have said. It would have been like a bunch of X's like I used to do, right? So, all right, Rhonda, we've taken over your time, but I want to yes. hear your writing. Okay, here we go. The proposal she presented last night was not acceptable, Mrs. Lipscomb said, pulling her reading glasses with the severely pointed black frames to the tip of her nose. All the better to glare at me with me and the other poor souls in this meeting. Her audience looked around, daring each other to speak first. Next to me, Allison was aggressively trying to swallow the lump in her throat. Little beads of sweat glistened on her normally pert upper lip. Maxine seemed to be extremely interested in the agriculture report she brought, studying it as if Liskin would let her actually talk about it this time. Martha had taken the opportunity to jump up and refill everyone's water glasses. I telepathically sent her a hug when I noticed the pitcher trembled over Liskin's glass like it was having its own private earthquake. Feeling, the goalkeeper in the final, feeling like the goalkeeper in the final minutes of a big game, I took a chance. I think you might misunderstand what's at the heart of her idea. My carefully worded statement was premature. Her eye dagger shot through me like a Lamborghini flying down Detroit Avenue. I slung back in my chair and checked my face for blood. Time's up. Oh, it's so oh. good! The devil wears Prada, da, da, da. <laughs> I was trying to get Avenue in so hard with mine, and I literally thought Detroit <laughs> Avenue, and I'm like, ah, no, that's hilarious. So good. Per upper lip. Loved all, all of your choices, Rhonda. I did Thank not you. even remember we had an assignment to include that word. It was so awesomely put in there in such an awesome way. I loved everything about that story. Thank you very much. Uh, Piper says that was great. Um, all right. Tina, do you have anything to say? Sorry, I feel like I'm like, I was trying to look at something else and I didn't know if I, I was I, muted. I just feel like we might have wrote about the same person. I'm just not really sure. <laughs> oh, maybe you should go next then. Yeah, let's hear it. Although my person is, is um lives in a different place. I totally brought, it totally brought out my East Coaster. Oh, ah. I, my my ah. dad was born in Brooklyn. So I spent a lot of time in that part of the world. So, okay, here goes. The proposal to the Minister of Ag Agriculture had been a pre bit premature, obviously. He had nodded his head through the presentation, but it was obvious he wasn't engaged. Kathy had known what his answer would be before he gave it. She barely listened when he droned on about how it just wasn't prudent at this time, blah, blah, blah. She spent the last two weeks agonizing over this presentation. She'd poured her heart and soul into it not satisfied with anything less than perfect. She was proud of the final result and had walked into this meeting full of confidence. It had been, it had all been a colossal waste of time. Kathy found her way back to her car with her head held high, smiling opt optimis optimistically at the receptionist manning the desk by the parking garage. She didn't even look up. Mm. Once inside her car, Kathy's whole body slumped. She didn't even want to think about what her boss was going to say. Would she even have a job come Monday? Mm. No sense worrying about it now. She had the whole weekend to worry about. Her boyfriend, the goalkeeper for the New York Rangers, expected her to be at Rockefeller Ice Rink first thing in the morning. His team was mm. being featured on GMA, and he was one of the members chosen for a personal interview with Robin Roberts. It wasn't that she minded Rockefeller Center. It was a beautiful place. It was the idea of either having to battle the traffic on Madison Avenue or dealing with the Staten Island ferry and subway system during rush hour. She wasn't sure she loved the guy that much. Then there was her mother. She was arriving 
Saturday night at JFK and expected to be picked up from the airport. More traffic. And on a Saturday night of all times. And of course, going to the little church down the street wasn't good enough for mom. Nothing but St. Patrick's would do. Hmm. After all, Grandpa O'Malley had been baptized there. Kathy gave becoming an atheist a momentary thought, weighing, it, weighing whether it would be worth it in order to avoid Manhattan on the weekend for the second <laughs> time. <laughs> Kathy sighed as she pulled out of the parking garage onto the busy street. A taxi blared its horn at her. She tried to get into the right lane to merge onto the Jersey Turnpike, but nobody cared enough to let her in, and she missed it. Darn Jersey drivers, she thought. At least in Manhattan, people pretended to have some manners. I Aww. love it, the whole thing. And Tina, it reads like a romance. And here's mm. like, it, and I'm not saying, cause like with, if, you, if someone who doesn't write romance sits down to write a romance, it's all gonna be focused on the wrong things. You're focusing on who this person is on the inside and what they're dissatisfied with. And we, you've already kind of like given us a pepper of the fact that she's with someone that's not great for her. And so we want to know more. Like, I feel like you're setting me up for a romance, but, but I could be maybe, but even if not, like it just was well done. Like the characterization was really good. I love it. Yeah. It's good characterization. That's exactly what I would have said. Yep. Oh. Shell says she wasn't sure she loved the guy that much. So funny, but also thought provoking. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was my favorite line in the whole thing because mm -hmm. I'm telling you what traffic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a love stream. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know all those places. I love that I can picture all of that. Me too. Yeah. That was I great. might I might all eyeball a certain underwire garment and wonder if the guy was worth it before leaving the house myself. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not worth donning that particular garment, you will not be seeing me. Oh, that's hilarious. Gigi says that is, Tina, that is awesome. Felt her pain. Yeah, yes, love it. Yes, yes, I don't want to go now. Like, I feel like there's, we're so good. Like, and mine is so, I, I can't well, what did you, what did you write? You said you only wrote a few words. Like, I'm so right. curious about what you wrote. You're really going to make me wait. I'm going to read it right now. But like I said, like, I feel like I set everybody up for like, I crafted. No, I really didn't craft that well. <laughs> but like, I really wanted to stop in this certain moment. And I feel like that if I keep this for a book, I still have to go back and really work on this moment. And you'll, and it probably won't even, I don't, let me just read right. it yeah. and then we'll talk. Okay. <clears throat> don't you think a proposal is a bit premature? Nolan opened his glove to the oncoming ball, then relished the familiar flap sound as it hit the leather webbing. The smell of freshly oiled leather mixed with newly cut grass wafted in the breeze as he took the ball in his other hand and rolling it a quarter turn in his grasp, round his arm back and sent it flying towards his teammate. He shrugged. It's the first time I've ever proposed. How am I supposed to know? Joel repeated the routine to Nolan. The, uh, sorry. Joel repeated a routine similar to Nolan's with a few extra rotations of the ball, then sent the ball flying back to Nolan. I don't think you had to be very experienced in the matter yourself to see to be able to see that two weeks isn't much of a probationary period before making that kind of commitment. Fwap. That's as far as I got. That's it. No, 150 I, I, words. Jen, remember when you said you what? weren't sure if you could write battle? Remember? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's like one of those things. You want to make sure that you are authentically portraying baseball, right? So you're yes. trying to be thoughtful about how he's throwing the ball. And that's why and you the felt sound like you and be the careful. Smells. Yes. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So it deserved a little bit of dwelling time there. Yeah. And I think it needs more, but you're exactly right. It's exactly like the, the opening scene to Avoiding Esther. Available that, now at JenniferCarl.com. <laughs> and that, like, it's... <laughs> The battle scene at the beginning is not what you would expect in a romance, but I need to have some authenticity so that you know what this guy's gone through. So you sure. could, you're inside him more. Same thing with this guy. Like there has mm -hmm. to be some, I hate reading a sports romance and there's very little about the sport and you don't know, like you, it could be any guy. You could just take that sport out and put a different sport in. I don't like that. I don't feel like it's authentic. So yeah. And even in so, your yeah. newest book, you're like, well, he has to be doing some constable stuff, Jamie. I got to write some constable work in here. Remember? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah. He's a cop and I've done, there's no <laughs> cop work in here at all. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so I appreciate says, your carefulness. Thanks. Gigi says, I loved all the details. Made me feel like I was there. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Jason says he really liked it. Appreciate it guys. Yeah. So 150 words, but whatever, like I, I like it and I will put it in the folder of to use. So mm -hmm. that's more important, right? All right. Well, speaking of important, 
we're now down to J.R. Nichols. And oh, yeah. Wrote this morning. All right. I don't even know what this is. So we had five words and I thought I got most of them, but I don't think I did. So I only got two, by the way. I know. And the you know, I think having my little picture on the screen got me all in my head about like, what do I look like? So I think next week I'm not doing that. So if you liked it, maybe too bad. So anyway, here it is. Oh, wait, I lost the tab. Jamie <laughs> Sprint. Here it is. Okay. <clears throat> How did you meet your husband? Tiffany spread orange marmalade across a toast point and complimented the place setting in a futile attempt to avoid answering the question. Gertrude was relentless, asking it twice again, refusing to be put off even after Tiffany had cornered the servants and made an elaborate fuss over the appropriateness of the centerpiece, all ostrich plumes and pussy willows, perfect for a dinner celebrating such esteemed guests. When it was clear the question could no longer be avoided, Tiffany dabbed the corners of her mouth with her napkin, as though the gesture could push them up into the smile a naturally happy newlywed would wear upon being asked about the love of her life. I met Tony at a charity football match, she said. He played goalkeeper. There's a joke in there somewhere, Gertrude said, as Tiffany presumed she might. She put on her all-teeth smile and made a slight nod at the attempt at humor. Quite. Anyway, he found out what I did, and we bonded over the usual interest, over the unusual interest of the future of agriculture in this new post-war society. The rest, as they say, is history. Imagine, Gertrude guffawed. Bonding over something as dull as that. She took an enormous gulp of wine, then beckoned for a refill. I have to say, news of the proposal was a shock to us. We never thought old Tony would settle down, did we, fam? She raised her now full glass to the uproarious approval of the jovial folks crammed in round the table. And Tiffany, feeling the color rush to her face, dropped her head and wished Tony could be there now, sitting next to her, to squeeze her hand and remind her of what it was like back home by the fire, with just the two of them there to quietly discuss their hopes and dreams for the future. I'd suppose some would have thought our marriage premature, she finally managed, lifting her head and setting her chin. We just were too old to carry on for too long without a promise of some kind, you understand. Though the words were harmless enough on the surface, the sting of them was felt by Tony's considerably older and as yet unmarried sister. The transformation of Gertrude's grotesquely painted face happened in phases. First, the brows collapsed over the bright purple shadow, as though someone had said something so confusing a master mathematician would need to be summoned to make sense of it. Then they shot up in surprise before widening in outrage. Get out, she shrieked, to the apparent stunned surprise of the others at the table, who'd been laughing only seconds before at the riotous and jovial three, two, one. Wow. I love her eyes. The whole description of her emotions on her face, so good. Thanks. Along with the rest of it, but I love that part. Appreciate it. I really think you should let me read it in my British accent, first of all. <laughs> I, I love that you you didn't put on an accent, but I know, like you said, football and goalkeeper, which tells me that it's not American because we don't yes. call them goalkeeper. You know, I love that. And then you said something out quite uh, another thing. So like, like you set it up totally without having to like do fake accents or anything. Like just so that was so well written that I knew the settings. So I appreciate that. Thanks. Thanks. I appreciate it. Piper says, put on her Alti smile. Love that shell like that one as well. Um, Maria says, Jamie, this is amazing. Oh, thanks. Maria sort I, of inspired me. Maria and I had a little bit of a chat this week. And uh, yeah, so I heard goalkeeper and immediately it was football and not soccer to me. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Piper loved the collapse of the brows over the purple shadow. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Really great. Since really I'm really from well. Alaska, my mind immediately went to hockey. Me too. <laughs> I'm not from Alaska, but yes, when I saw goalkeeper, yeah. I'm like, I'm not writing a hockey romance. So I just kind of ignored that word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Maria was pleased by all the Britishness. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's fun. She probably was pleased that I didn't read it for you too. So <laughs> Gigi says, Jamie, like a whole story in a short amount of time. There is so much good there. I can't even. So Jamie, oh, with, as soon as we were finished with our sprint, after I was like, well, you know, I only got 150 <laughs> words. Jamie was Jamie said, well, I started something. I'm not sure if it works. 
uh, you know, she was like, it's like she's going in a different direction or whatever. It started something new. And now we get that it works, right? Like this is what's so great about sharing sprints is that you see if like it's working or not before you even go into a full on story, right? Or not. Yeah, because sometimes you're writing and like tense will change during a sprint or you'll change someone's name or like you think you've got this whole, if you're trying to do something too big, you can really lose who you're even talking about, right? And that's why it felt like too big of a scene to try to do in that amount of time. So, yeah. but I was wasn't thinking I was just going you know what I mean right like uh oh <laughs> right Maria says lol Jen wasn't going to say anything oh we know you're thinking it we know you love my accent okay so that was <laughs> that's our favorite part but we also have to get on to our what's next before uh we say adieu to everybody here and our what's next is where we share what is happening in our careers and what we'll be doing between now and our next podcast so let's go backwards jamie and let's see what is next in your life well this week i have a mystery for everyone the mystery will jamie write her newsletter Ooh. sign up at writingshorts.net to get the answer <laughs> because it's supposed to go out on monday but i'm feeling woefully unmotivated mm. and it's funny because we didn't do the news like i didn't do newsletter chat for the first time when you would think that it would motivate me but even after going to the newsletter chat i still just don't want to do my newsletter and i know how i am if i don't want to do something i won't do it so let's see if i feel like doing it before it's supposed to go out at 10 30 on monday but if you sign up if i send it it will be a free short story sent directly to your inbox and that's what you get every time i send out my newsletter so sign up writingshorts.net. Who's next? I'll go next. And uh, newsletters are on my mind as well, because I'm sending one out tomorrow and I will be sending it out um, because I am going to be opening up uh, for my beta readers. Yay! So I got my, I got my book back from the copy editor. I've made all the little corrections. Um, there were a lot, but it was mostly like formatting things. Like when I would edit something and I would miss uh, like a comma or like mm. the end quote marks and I'm famous for end quote marks missing them because I'm so busy typing um so ready to do that um figuring out exactly how I'm going to deliver that we talked about that at newsletter chat if you want to know more about that go back and watch this week's newsletter chat um but yeah so that's next for me is beta readers and um cover reveal so Ooh, very cover reveals are fun we could they got to get your newsletter to be able to see the cover and so tell them how to spell your name because it's special oh yeah, go to my website at um, Jennifer with one N. Car you can see it right here on the screen. Jennifer Carl, no hyphen oh, in that uh, there website. You go, yeah. Jennifer with one N, Carl with two L's, Tong, T O N G dot com. And you can sign up for my newsletter there. You're so brave to reach mm -hmm. out and poke it with your pen like that. I would have totally ended the whole podcast by accident doing that just now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, she's coming for us. All right. Maria says her what's next camp nano words and also typing up notes on hot cross buns from my wonderful chat with Jamie. Oh, hot cross uh, buns. That's uh, right. If I have a hot cross buns article, Maria, I can send out my newsletter. Hmm. That's what she said. Maybe that's what you could do for your yes. newsletter. Yes. Hmm. All right. Oh, Tina. Piper, Piper oh, is going to do better keywords. She bought publisher rocket and she's beta reading for Teresa. That's so great. Yeah. And she's got more words to do in her work in progress. Yeah. And I wouldn't fix Shell, my yeah. keywords too after buying that. All my old books, I did that. Yep. For sure. Shell says she has to stop procrastinating and start her short story. <laughs> stop procrastinating. It's on everybody's to-do list. It's the first thing. <laughs> right. Check it off. I'm stopped procrastinating. I did something. All right. Did I call on someone already? If you not, You started Ron to say my name. Okay, then go ahead, Tina. What's next with you? Um, I just want to say that I no longer call my procrastinating procrastinating. I call it thinking. And I have Becca's mm. voice in a loop on my head saying, thinking is working. Thinking is working. Thinking is working. <laughs> so um, having made the changes that I did and having my word count go way up, I'm on track to getting two books published in the fall. Yeah, wow, that's great. So I'm really excited about that. And God willing, and the creek don't rise. That's so exciting. Happen. That that's is quite exciting. a big accomplishment. Two books. Wow. Yeah, to go from 10 years to two books in a year, I feel like that's great progress. So we'll see is if I can do it. going to be your Civil War romance? No, I have to finish this trilogy first. <laughs> <Rhonda doesn't laughs> I know her face was like, <laughs> 
Rhonda, just if it makes it any easier for you to deal with, I did open up my Widows of the West book one this week and think that I might be moving that up in the production schedule. Just yes, so you know. I'm very pleased about that. Thank you. Okay. So now that you're pleased, let's hear what your what's next is. All right. My what's next is, um, well, my writing partner has taken a little bit of time off. So our progress is a little bit slowed down. So I'm going to figure out a way to mm, encourage her a little bit. So I'll be doing that. And then um, also I'm going to get started on editing what she's already done so far. And so that's it for the book. And um, working on my blog, I'm trying to add some stuff to that. And uh, yeah, that's my week. What is your right. blog? Where can people read something that you wrote? Well, it's ddbowman.com. But there's a little problem with the site right now because um, it completely got deleted the other day. Ah! Yeah. And so that's also something I'll be doing this week. But we it looks like it's uh, mostly repaired. But I would wait until next week to. We to did not that. even talk about like webby stuff like that. Uh, Rhonda barfy feelings in my stomach for sure. I'm so sorry mm -hmm. that happened. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I'm feeling a lot better today than I was yesterday though. It's like, I can't believe you just dropped this on me. We're way over time. I must know how in the world could something like that happen, but I'll shut up now. Oh, you can talk about it later, right? So I'm sure we'll hear about it. As soon as we go off live, we're gonna be like, Rhonda. All right. All hearts clear before we move on. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in today. And don't forget next week, we're going to be talking about perma-free. It's going to be a really great episode. I'm excited about that. Um, Mondays and Wednesdays, you can live sprint with us from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And don't forget to join me on Tuesdays for a newsletter chat. But until then, thank you everyone for joining and we appreciate you. Bye guys.